In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I make a no-knead sourdough pizza. I'm going to make two pizzas and all it takes is one little bit of folding. That's it. No kneading and not much prep at all once you've got your sourdough made. So who doesn't like a good sourdough? And it all starts here with a good sourdough starter. This video is for people that have a sourdough starter already made and they're ready to make their dough. So let's move on and get stuck into it. First of all, you're going to need your sourdough starter waiting in a mixing bowl that's going to be big enough to take all the ingredients. To that, we're going to add filtered room temperature water. Ah, adding water. I didn't realize it could be so dreamy. Okay now, okay, now we're back to being serious. We need to add the olive oil to the mix right now. I actually forgot to record that part of it, so do forgive me. Now the flour goes in, just a simple all-purpose flour. So the next step is quite simply mixing the flour, the salt, and those other ingredients in the bowl together, mixing them around, scraping the sides, getting all the dry bits off the side, making it into a rough sort of bowl. I'm not being fancy here, I'm not shaping it. I'm just trying to make sure that the dry and wet ingredients have blended together nicely and are going to sit in the bowl in a nice ball. Well, not an ice ball, just a ball type shape. Grab a clean tea towel or something similar, place it over the top and then leave this dough in the bowl sitting in a warm spot for about an hour. Once the hour is done, bring it out, take off the cloth and as you can see, you've got a beautiful looking ball of dough that's actually starting to show a bit of movement. Now we take the dough out of the bowl onto the bench and this is the only time that we're actually going to work the dough and we really don't do that much to it. So we're going to place it on the bench. We're going to stretch it out a little bit on the bench and then grabbing one end of it first, I'm just pulling it out upwards and then placing that down in the middle of the dough, folding it over and then doing it with the opposite side. Again, pulling it up forwards and into the middle of the dough and then I'm doing it again from the other sides, so north, south, east and west, just pulling it up, out and into the middle. It's as simple as that. I then flip it over, place it onto the bench. So with the scraper, I'm just putting it against the side of the dough, pulling it around and stretching it and tucking it under at the back and doing that a few times. If you've got your own method of doing this, by all means, do it. The purpose of this stage here is just to tighten the outside of the dough a bit and get a bit of surface tension. And we're not gonna do it too much, only a few times. I think maybe I did it eight times in total, but don't get too carried away because this is pretty much a no need type of dough and this is the only work the dough is going to get. Using your scraper, pick up the dough, place it back into the bowl, cover it, put it into a warm spot, Leave it for about four to five hours. I recommend about five hours. In the case of this video, mine was at about four and a half hours. It looked pretty good to me, so I brought it over to the bench and moved on to the next step after four and a half hours. Before we go any further, I just want to mention that this is my second video of two videos in the November 22 collaboration. The awesome YouTube channel 2Lulu Creates is hosting this awesome collaboration where a whole number of videos are being made by some awesome channels who have come together and we're all showing you our dough related videos. Now, for viewers watching this in November 2022, you can actually win yourself a prize, well, possibly win a prize, by watching and leaving a meaningful comment on all the videos. And then on December 1st, she's actually going to have a draw, a prize draw, where there's gonna be a baking related prize and a random comment picker is going to pick somebody who's commented on all the videos and that could be you. So do watch the videos in full, comment, and you never know, December 1st, you could be a winner. And can I just please say thank you so much for having me in this collaboration. There's so many great channels and it's really good to be a part of something so cool with so many really good quality channels out there. There you go, after four and a half hours, that's what my dough looks like and I was quite happy with it at that stage. So it's back onto the bench. Now I'm just getting some flour onto my hands. I don't want to have my hands all getting stuck to the dough. So I just rub flour into them, a little bit of flour onto the bench as well. And then turning that dough out onto the bench, being careful not to bash all the air out of it as I do that. I sprinkle flour on top of the dough 
that section was the bit that was in the bottom of the bowl and it's all sticky. So that flour is going to help it not stick to the bench as I turn it over. Once it's turned over, I just divide that into two doughs and there's my two pizza bases ready to go. Well, pizza doughs ready to go, I should say. As you can see, I'm not working them at all. I'm just getting a very basic round shape flour onto the bench, moving one aside so I can work it one dough at a time. Before I work the dough, I just get some square baking paper, sprinkle some semolina on top of that, and the dough, once it's formed, is gonna go on top of that. Now, if you've actually got a pizza paddle or something like that, by all means, you can use that. I don't, so this is the way I'm going to do it when putting it into my oven onto a pizza stone. Initially, I use this section of my fingers to push the dough down, and then it's all about my fingers. I'm using my fingers to go around in a circle and work the dough, flattening and thinning the inside of the pizza where the filling goes, and leaving the crust area on the outside slightly raised all the way around. In my case, I've got this massive pizza spatula, so I'm just getting a bit of flour onto the surface of that, so I can slide it under the dough and get it onto the baking paper. I give the dough a quick touch up with my fingers just in case it's been misshaped. In this case, I'm making a three cheese filling with green onions, garlic, and black pepper for my wife. And I'll leave a list of all of that in the description down below. I take that over to my preheated oven with the pizza stones already in there getting nice and hot. And I get that baking and then it's straight on to the next pizza for me. I'm doing a simple margarita style pizza here with a homemade tomato sauce and a cheese topping. That's it, nice and simple. The cheese pizza is ready and my wife likes it a little bit darker so that's why you can see the darker topping than say I would normally have myself anyway. But hey, it's her pizza. Cut that up and it looks great. And if you look at the crust, you can see that the crust is a, a little bit dense but it's got those air bubbles all the way through it and I've got to tell you, it just tastes delicious. It really does and I just love that chewiness to the crust. The margarita style pizza came out of the oven about 10 minutes later and the crust looked really nice on it, really happy with the colour and the way it baked. Now I should have pointed out that I had my oven turned on to 250 degrees Celsius Fahrenheit, I'll put it on the screen right now. And I baked it the entire time at that temperature as with the other one. I should also mention that with this pizza I actually made my base a little bit thinner because I wanted a thinner base on my pizza. But look at that, you can still see that the dough, even though it's thinner, it's still got its air holes all through the dough and into that crust section on the end there. Really happy with it. Tastes quite delicious too, I might add. So as you can see, these pizzas have a very thin and basic crust with air holes through them. They taste fantastic and they're just right. Now, obviously, if you want a thicker crust and all that sort of jazz, by all means, get your sourdough and work it properly and knead it and fold it and spend more time working the dough. But this video is all about the no need, minimal work type method and there you go, that's how it's come out. And yeah, we're always quite happy with it, doing it this way. And it saves a little bit of time. YouTube is placing a video onto the screen right now and I'd love for you to click on that and check that out next. And if you want to see more of my content, please consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell to get notifications of when my new videos come out. Thank you so much for being here and watching this video today, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.